Yes, in today's session, we will uh, start with understanding what is normalization, why normalization is required, and how to perform normalization using different forms of normalization. Okay, they, we have something called first normal form, second normal form, and third normal form. With that, using uh, those uh, three different normal form, we will see how we can do the database design. And next, we will see uh, the different types of constraints that are available in relational database management system. And also, we will see the advantages of uh, creating that uh, constraints at the table level, at the database level. Followed by this, we will perform uh, the data definition language. And we will perform uh, the DML operations. In addition, we will cover the different types of joints in SQL with some demo data. First of all, what is normalization? We will start with normalization. So what is a normalization? It is a database design technique. Before you develop any application or any uh, software or any application or any product, you need to have the data model in place as part of software development life cycle before you proceed with building application or something like that you need to have the data model design should be there in your hand without the data model you cannot develop the application even if you develop it it will be in mess okay similarly right so it's something like um, blueprint before you build a building or before you construct a house you need to have the blueprint without having the blueprint if you construct the house what is going to happen right so that's the reason why data modeling should be done first and then only the application development has to be done next in order to do the database or data model design we use a technique called normalization <clears throat> What exactly normalization? What we do in normalization? So, in the case of normalization, we divide the larger tables into more than one smaller tables and link those smaller tables using relationship. That is what we do it as part of normalization. The question is, why should I do normalization? It is a technique. Normalization is a technique using which we do the database design with normalization if you do the normalization or if you do the proper database design using this normalization technique you can eliminate data redundancy you can improve the data integrity and also you can overcome certain anomalies like insertion anomaly update anomaly and deletion anomalies this kind of anomalies you can overcome okay uh, now you understood uh, you know the repercussion if you don't do the normalization these are the issues that you will be posing it right uh, with the normalization you can avoid this kind of issues before we proceed with understanding how to perform normalization using different types of uh, normal form let us first understand what exactly the insertion anomaly, update anomaly and deletion anomaly with this simple data set. In this data set, we can see that the employees are working uh, in different departments. These are the three departments are there. For these three departments, uh, almost uh, four three or four employees are working, uh, three employees are working. We could see that some employees are um, working in, okay, but here we can see that John is working in CIS department, but his employee is 456 and the same John's record repeated more than one time. There is a redundancy here. But uh, when you look at the student group column, this employee got assigned to two different student groups. You might be wondering what is this student group? Is employee why 
student uh, uh, group is coming into picture let's say this company is recruiting they recruited freshers they recruited freshers they recruited uh, maybe 100 freshers they want their employees the senior employees to give training to those freshers what they did one employee since one employee cannot give training to all the freshers they created those freshers with the different groups you just think that way long fellow is the one responsible for training this uh, freshers group and brec is the one responsible for training marketing club group and so on let's see uh, this training program is planned for 2 months after 2 months the training program is over so after the training program is over all the freshers the eligible freshers okay and they will get assigned to the respective department so once they get assigned to the the, the respective department we don't need this group any longer you wanted to delete this group so you, let's say you are uh, in the you are in the pursuit of deleting this group so what you are doing is you are using this command at the database level delete from employee this is a employee table the table name is employee delete from employee where student group is equal to beta alpha something like that if you delete this what will happen this only this group is no longer required but the employee is required for my company the employee data and the department related data should should be still th these two uh, information should still persist in my database this because you delete this one with the impression of deleting the uh, group which is no longer required you are deleting the important other information from this table unknowingly not only this one look here another student group with the same name uh, got assigned to john even the john uh, information will also get removed from this table this is called deletion anomaly by deleting one value you are de removing other important information or uh, you know the important data from this table deletion in, uh, you know because you are storing all the data in a single table okay next one is update anomaly so what is update anomaly for example recently john got assigned to marketing department so we need to update his department in this database since we have more than one record exists for john when you try to update this one let's say if you are updating uh, john with this uh, based on a student group update employee table where department is equal to marketing where student group is technology or if you give this only this in this record the department name will get replaced or will be overwritten as marketing for john this is this update is yes, this update is not complete this update is not complete why it is not complete one more record is there for john there also that in that record his department is different but you will be under the impression i already updated his department to marketing but still there is some anomaly in that case you need to find out okay what other records are there what other records exist for john in this table you need to you know search for it and then you need to replace all uh, the records which were redundantly stored in this table right you need to identify and then you need to update all those things that is unnecessary pain okay so this is called uh, the update anomaly another thing is let's say you remove this uh, let's say you are you are with the intention of deleting this group you remove this one let's say a new employee is joining the company 
and the and we want to assign that employee to accounting department first of all you don't have any record for the accounting department in this table so in that case how can you assign him to this one this is insertion anomaly so in this case the table design is not good because of which all these anomalies are happening so how do i overcome these insertion updation deletion anomalies by doing proper database design we can address this issue in order to do the proper database design you need to apply the normalization technique so what are the normalization technique there are three different normal forms are there first normal form second normal form third normal form in the case of first normal form the table it should have unique records in it all the rows in your table should be unique in addition to that you have another rule each cell must contain an atomic value single value it should not have more than one value in each column remember these two rule very simple one now let us see how we can perform first normal form with this table okay let me do one thing i just made a mistake here table let's start this with this table in this case the customer john he has more than one record in this table at one point in time you wanted to know in which order john ordered fries and coke more than one time okay see first of all we have a duplicate record for john but we do not know whether it's a duplicate so there could be chances the same customer might order the same product in the future or you would have ordered uh, you know the same products in the past also but we have duplicate records here right we have redundancy here john john it's not unique the rows are not unique here it is violating the first normal form the first rule of the first normal form is all rows must be unique and the next one is all the values or each cell or each column you have to have atomic value single value. you are not supposed to have more than one value look here john is a single value his name could be john andrew or something like that but still it is a single value it represent only one person whereas in this column products we have more than one product products are there we have more than one products are there it is also against the first normal form each cell must contain single value but here we have more than one value so here we don't have unique re unique records and on top we have more than one value stored in this column hence it is violating the first normal form how can i address this one how can i address this one okay so the next uh, how do i address this one so the next step is what we will do is we are going to add a, we are going to create or introduce a new column by the name of order id with the order id the order id column is a unique it has a unique value in it it should not have see in this case uh, it has a unique value in it somehow we are able to address this uh, you know issue right so all rows must be unique yes now it is unique because of the order id with this order id we are able to find out in which order john ordered fries and coke in order id 1 and 3 john ordered fries and coke with this order id we are able to identify an unique instance of the row fine the first rule of the normal first normal form now satisfied after introducing the order id column here in this order id column we have unique values good with this unique id we are able to identify uniquely each transaction but still this problem persists 
each column we should have only one value here but we are having more than one value how can i address this one so one solution is i can remove this column from this table i can store it in a separate table another possible solution is i can create two columns one column to hold fries and other column to hold coke that is fine but when it comes to this customer let's see if this customer ordered 20 products fries nuggets comma coke comma um, peanut butter comma so on and so forth 20 products let's see you have 100 customers just because one customer mike ordered 20 products and rest of them ordered maximum two or one or two maximum three okay so except this guy this guy ordered 30 uh, let's say 30, 20 products mm. just because one guy ordered 20 products we cannot create 20 columns even if you create it for the other records the uh, you know the uh, all the 20 columns will not be filled with the data it can lead to some kind of sparse matrix so we cannot create many columns for each and every value in this uh, in this uh, column so what is the way out now so only way out is we need to break this table this column we need to break this from this table so now i am going to store this in a separate table instead of creating multiple columns i am going to store it in a single table with a single column but here what happens is I store fries uh, in the first row, in the second row I am going to store coke and third row I am going to store fries and fourth row I am going to store nuggets, fifth row I am going to store coke and so on. Okay, I stored it. So how do I know which products ordered in which order? Which all products got ordered in which order? How do I know that? In order to know that, I am going to store the order ID along with this products table fine order ID I just stored along with this column and also I created a link between these two table so order ID and order ID so as in order ID so let's say John the customer John is order ID is 1 in this order ID 1 fries and coke got ordered so in this case, the products, each cell has only one value in it. Each record, each records in this table are unique. In this table, each values are stored in a separate row. Now the question is, here the rows are not, the values are not unique here. Right? You might be asking this one. But here, it is a kind of a composite key, order ID and price, both put together, primary key. Primary key is nothing but unique key. So unique key, you can create it based on a single column. Instead of saying unique key, primary key. Primary key column will hold unique key, unique values in it. You can create a primary key based on a single column or you can create a primary key based on more than one column. So in this case, the order ID and products, these two are composite key for one price and for the order ID one coke. Whereas here also the coke is there, but the order ID is different. With the combination of these two, we can identify specific record. So that, for example, John has ordered fries and coke. Right? The very next day he is going to cancel coke. So in that case, only this record will get deleted. Still, this record will remain as it is. It will not get disturbed. Yet there is no deletion anomaly. But if you store it in a single column, what will happen? He wants to delete Coke, but along with this entire order ID, the customer, everything will get deleted. So now you understood why we need to decompose or divide or break the tables into more than one table to address insert update anomaly deletions fine the next one is second normal form now let us look at the second normal form so what the second normal form says is if the table or if the database 
has to be in the second normal form first of all it should comply with first normal form in addition to the first normal form all the non key columns should fully be fully functionally dependent on key column so let us take other data set in this data set student id and uh, course id is there and i have course fee column here here the first rule yes first rule should be satisfied all the rows should be unique and also uh, this one uh, the each each column should have single value so each column have single value but here the rows are also unique for example it's a composite key student id and composite key course id these two are let's say you no know, the composite key these two columns forms a column student one student take only uh, you know the course id one and the same student uh, in this record the course id is different okay so the course fee is 500000 so in this table these two are key column composite primary key okay and this is a non key column the non key column should fully be dependent on the primary key column let us assume that let's say you know this is a primary key at this moment okay this column is a non key column this is not a primary key column right the course fee can repeat more than one time hence it is a non key column this non key column is not fully dependent on student id whereas the course fee is fully dependent on fully functionally dependent on course id column okay so for course id the fee is 100 500 for the same course id the fee is 500 we charge for another student also for all the student for the course id one the fee is 500 if i remove course id here and if i say 500 course fee is uh, 500 for student id one and if i say 1000 rupees uh, fees for the student id one does that make any sense course fee is not in this case fully dependent on the student id unique column whereas it is fully dependent on the course id okay with the course id itself you can find out each student how much he paid for the specific courses so in this case the course id is fully dependent on that but if you know the course id you will be able to get the you can derive the value from the non key column but in this case if you know the course id you can derive the you can you can make a guess what is the fees even in this case there is a partial dependency exists between these two column there should not be any partial dependency between the key column and non key column if there is a column exists in my table it should be fully depend on or fully functionally dependent on the key column but this is not fully whereas this one is fully dependent on this one hence we need to break this one it is against the second normal form hence we are breaking this column from this table because this column is not fully uh, dependent on the student id but it is depending on the course id only hence i am going to remove this one so student id course id but if you break this column you will have only course fee here but in order to identify which course fee is related to which course id you need to have the course id column hence you need to have this one but for this in this table to know which student is undergoing which course for that you need to have the course id so you now the next step is you need to see both tables now both the tables do not have any partial dependency this one is fully dependent on this one this one is fully dependent on this one there is no partial dependency hence it is in second normal form now okay and you can link these two tables you know based on the course id in order to query the data from these two tables next one is third normal form in the case of third normal form if a database has to be said that the 
that it is in third normal form it should fulfill these conditions or these rules the first rule is it should be it should comply with both the first normal form and second normal form in addition to that all any non key column should not depend on any other non key column you know what is unique key what is non key isn't it student id is the unique key course id is the unique key in the other table but uh, a non key column should not depend on any other non key column for example in this table employee id employee name zip code is there you know forget about this is zip code and uh, as if you know the zip code you can tell the state and also let's say city and district okay so in this case the employee name is fully dependent on employee id and the, uh, the employee zip also employee id is dependent on the employee so this guy is living in so and so place and zip id is required whereas if you look at this non key column employee state employee the state city district all these three columns are fully dependent on this one okay this is a non key column these are also non key column there is a dependency between the non key columns hence it is violating the third normal form you need to break this three columns into a separate table and again so in order to uh, you know identify or in order to relate this one with this table you need to have the employee the zip code should be there here okay zip code employee state so now you understood how we address the third normal form in the case of the third normal form we we have broken all the non key column which was dependent on the other non key column okay and also to link these two tables to form a relationship we need to have a common key column hence we have the we store the zip code here with this zip code we can link with this table to query the data from these two tables suppose you want to query the employee name and his a city and a district and a state you need to have a relationship the relation should be based on the common key column between these two tables okay so now you understood the fundamentals of normalization the first normal form second normal form third normal form next we will move on with understanding constraints well, let me just um, say